Hey, listen, God. someone needed to take the bullet. We needed at least one person not dressed to par today. Yep, yeah, but there will not be bullets uh, in this match. There will instead be arrows, boomerangs, and onions with faces on them. As we're going to have Olimar versus Young Link. The Buzz versus Biddy. Game one. This is going to be a fun experience for those who are not too familiar with a heavy zoning game. Because both of these characters love to just swing when they're close in, but have oh. plenty of options for when they're not. Yeah, and right now, Biddy off the gates, guns a blazing right now against the Buzz. So not able to get his footing uh, at all, but the Buzz able to get back down to the ground. Now here comes the hard part for Young Link. Young Link is able to rack up damage with the best of them, but how well he's, or how quickly he's able to secure the kills is the hard part. You see Biddy risking it all with that uh, that drop zone fair. Not gonna punish too hard for it though, so. You know, able to live another day. Let's see what adjustments the bus makes here. Biddy has a really good idea of how to remove the Pikmin, and I've been able to notice that immediately. You see, every time a Pikmin latches itself on, we see down tilt, we see back air. One of these moves to call out to Buzz's Pikmin placing, and there's an up smash to call out to Buzz's Olimar placing as Biddy breaks first blood in the set. Yeah, great stuff there from Biddy, but the Buzz able to rack up enough damage where it's at least manageable for him. Olimar not lacking in any sense of the imagination and kill power, especially if he has the right Pikmin line him up. But my god! Yeah! <laughs> It's a you famine in the works as Biddy <laughs> manages to annihilate every Pikmin with one Nair. See, Alamar sees Pikmin, Young Link sees pottery. He's just breaking them all like it doesn't mean it make a difference to him. Well, pots are made of clay. Clay comes from the earth. Earth is where onions are grown. The buzz takes the seconds, the first stock of the Biddy. It all makes sense. <laughs> Epsi didn't kill himself. Um, continuing on here. Yeah, so we're at a bit of a stalemate here. Now here, let's see how Biddy adjusts here. Again, taking the first stock, you know, it's one thing, but being able to hold the lead as a completely uh, different, uh, a horse of a different color. Because right now, the Buzz has a killer lineup out right now, purple and red. Yeah, purple, of course, the MVP of any Olimar's lineup, I feel is going to be especially potent in this matchup, just because it's going to allow the Buzz to use the Pikmin throw while advancing, because it's an active hitbox. Other Pikmin, they're going to latch themselves on, they're going to die very quickly. This is not a matchup where Olimar's going to have a lot of time to be able to reassess his lineup and prepare. So any opportunity that the Buzz has to further his stage control and put out something that can hurt Biddy is really important. Yeah, and right now the Buzz having the, uh, again, a really good lineup out in front of him. Two purples, the blue just meeting its demise right now. But again, the Buzz is having such a powerful lineup in front of him. Look how much shield damage that did, my god. That is not a shield anymore. That is a buckler. <laughs> yeah. And as lucky yeah. he's able to block anything. Yeah, that is indeed a tic-tac. Been able to get back to the ledge, having to drift a little bit. And there we go, the Buzz able to right the ship. Not to losing that first stock. All right, let's see. What's the lineup? Two purple and a white. Try and build up that early percent damage while maintaining his stage control. I like the option. See how well DeBuzz can take control of the situation while he has got the lead. But meanwhile, I like the retreating projectiles while he's waiting for his end. And that's another thing. Using Order Call's armor to try and check any of Biddy's hit confirms is going to keep DeBuzz safe for a long time. But if Biddy manages to call him out on it, that's a huge payoff. Mm -hmm, absolutely. There we go. The, it looks, actually looks like the white Pikmin uh, extended the, hurt bo the hitbox to the forward air right there. Ooh, but Biddy reaching a little bit on that F-Smash, probably thinking that the Buzz is going to, you know, reach through the platform and hit him. This could potentially be curtains for him. And then it is the purple forward smash. And the Buzz, again, after, you know, stumbling away that first stock, finishing out in strong fashion with the two stock. Now, here comes, now comes the fun part. You get to see the chess game. How is Biddy going to adjust to that again? The adrenaline could probably has worn off by this point, you know. Taking a first stock against a top 10 player in the world. Uh, in the buzz and obviously the king of New York, you know, it, it's a, it all kind of rushes to your head to a point So let's see how Biddy is able to you know, maybe maintain composure take control of his emotions here it's, It could potentially be a long set and on the buzzer side Let's just see you know if he can continue to stay consistent again doesn't have to look pretty as long as we win He's just got to keep up this fast-paced momentum because I feel like if things manage to get a little slower That's where young wings tools are more acclimated for the zone in the game I but agree. while we're redlining, let's just build up a clean 52% to start the game as we start things off for Kalos Pokemon League. Yeah, Olimar is, again, a phenomenal character in regards to just being able to rack up damage. Like, being able to go from 0 to 60 in 3.5 is fantastic. Like, players, it's, it's just insane of how 
how good this character can be in regards to the damage department, especially with the right lineup. And the Buzz has been doing a really good job capitalizing on, on the high offense lineups that he's been able to uh, pull. That's really important. I didn't know that that was going to trade like that. The fact that Olimar's up air is going to be able to beat out Young Wing's down air, really important. Because Biddy doesn't have a safe landing option. So if Debuzz can just keep on racking up the damage with the jungles, he's going to consistently threaten kill anytime Biddy's at any mid to high percentage. He got 32 from a down throw R bear. That's crazy. Again, just like the amount of time you have to adjust to what Olimar's throwing at you. Like the window is so small. And it's looking like that. The, Biddy having a uh, impossible time of getting back down to the stage. Oh, and from deep, Yikes. the free throw line uh, <laughs> coming through in spades for all of our right there as uh, the buzz up big in the second game. I think the buzz has developed pretty fine counterplay for the projectile hell. He's sacrificing a lot of pigment to not worry about boomerang and further advancing whenever fire arrows or bombs are taken out. Well, good on Biddy for delaying any of his returns with spin attack because we're seeing that that one little chop is helping keep the buzz at bay. That's okay. No up, up smash or up smash coming out uh, for the buzz right there. And Biddy just trying to apply some sort of pressure, and it looks like the buzz is just running away with this game right now. Ooh. Oh, in a. So remember what I said before about how the second game adjustment's gonna look? Uh, it didn't look that good. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Uh, yeah, no. The, uh... the, the buzz looks like he just kinda got a beat on whatever Biddy was looking for, and I don't think that stage choice was a great one either. Kalos having too much space in the middle, um, you know, just to be able to whiff punish uh, Young Link on landing. Look, the rope of the guillotine tightens into Buzz's hands. Let's see if he's going to be able to completely clutch this out with a solid 3-0, or if Biddy's going to be able to inject some life into this. Three, yeah, let's see if he can get himself on the board here. Go. Let's take Reverse right. to, to Pokemon Stadium. I was going to say, Biddy does also have uh, the added benefit of, of having Snake. I don't. I guess that's not a character he uh, feels comfortable going against Olimar, rightfully so, you know, ride the horse that got you here. So let's see if uh, Pokemon Stadium, go back here, is the adjustment that he needs. A little bit less active space than uh, than Kalos is going to have, or rather less open space. But I feel like Tabuz is able to control it very well. I don't know. Might be some sort of change in the game plan that Biddy's going to bring to us first uh, Stadium. It, it, we haven't seen bombs a lot in this matchup. No, yeah, he hasn't really had an opportunity to pull it. I feel like any time to, uh, Young Link wastes pulling bombs is just more stage control for Olimar. You know, you... you, you Ooh, but Jesus Christ. Good job, the Buzz. Yeah, no, this is a, a rough one so far. But Biddy's not out of it just yet. There you go. The up B will can combo into the up air right there. Ooh. But Biddy's giving himself a puncher's chance right now. Almost has the Buzz, uh, you know, down on his first stock here. Plenty of damage racked up. Now it's just a matter of closing out this stock while remaining safe. Yeah, and again, such is the woes for Young Link. And having such stubby legs, you're going to have to get in Olimar's wheelhouse, uh, <clears throat> you know, to kill him. But unfortunately, I don't know if he's going to, you know, you're playing with fire at that point when you get that close to Olimar. So let's see what Biddy's answer is going to be. Biddy growing a little desperate, even trying to use his air to try and get himself in on uh, Olimar. Triple purple lineup wow. from, uh, from Olimar. That's rough doing. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> There's only like so many options that uh, that Debuzz has. I almost rarely see the triple purple lineup. Like, you don't almost... You, I at least uh, almost never seen well, that. Well, that's because there's always at least a tactical purpose to having one of the other ones. Like, blue is really good for its throws. Yellow has its hit stun uh, adaption. Uh, white is really good for its damage over time. But if it's purple, you know, sometimes mashing is a plan. Sure. Guess the job don't excuse me? All right, listen, I know I joke around often that grabs haven't been added to the game yet, but I don't think we need to take it that literally. In the words of Mushu from Mulan, how did you miss? He was three feet in front of you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, but the buzz getting a blessing here. Let's see if he can close out the stock before things uh, they could potentially get uh, two out of hand for him. And there we go. Just like I said, Biddy forced to recover uh, a little bit higher above the ledge in order to get back. And the buzz uh, right there, you know, to meet him with a back air. There you go, once again, the grab yeah. going out, and here comes the damage, man. Like I said, the lead, the, it, all, it can all slip away from you very quickly against Olimar if you're not paying attention. It's just there's so much of this bout that's a race for stage control 
Because you can't really keep up with the damage if you don't have that much presence on an Omar, especially when it's remaining as flighty as the Buzz in this matchup. He is running away with every little bit of a lead percentage he gets. And the damage over time from the Pikmin, kind of a nuisance for most characters. Yeah, absolutely. But like, that many characters can annoy Youngling from a distance, but like, it looks like Olimar definitely has a, uh, the recipe to do so. On top of that, the Buzz has done such a good job of making sure that the, it's a no-fly zone for Diddy. He's paid the price in percentage and stocks every time he's had to take to the skies. Ooh, we're finna grab again, but that boomerang giving Biddy a second chance at life here, but does not matter. The Pikmin blue up throw will result in uh, the game and the set 3-0 from DeBuzz. And again, you know, good on, obviously, you know, it takes a lot to get here to this point anyway. It's just unfortunate for Biddy that he had to run into the one top player that uh, A showed up and B didn't get upset today. So, yeah. you know, them's the breaks, unfortunately.